Hello and welcome to another episode of the book club, the uh, Risk Five Reader. So let's get right back into it. Uh, let's see, where did we leave off? Last time, oh yes, last time we ended with the uh, exclusive bar uh, doing some magic tricks with the exclusive bar and uh, how using its uh, properties, uh, algebraic properties, uh, we can do some interesting things like having a doubly linked list using only, you know, a single um, pointer sized word. And we can uh, swap to integers without uh, using an intermediate variable. Some neat things that uh, arise from just the, you know, the algebra of it, the algebraic properties of, uh, of uh, exclusive R. So today we're going to be moving on to uh, RV32i loads and stores. Uh, it says here, uh, and this is 2.5, so it says, as well as providing loads and stores of 32-bit words, W and uh, SW. Figure 2.1 shows that RB32I has loads for assigned and unsigned bytes and half words, LB, LBU, LH, LHU, and stars for bytes and half words. Or did we read this too? We might have read this too, actually. Yeah, I think we did this last episode as well. Yeah, and we talked about how uh, how like uh, how ARM has uh, shifts like the ability to shift baked into a lot of their stuff, and we talked about how MIPS had that uh, five stage pipeline. Uh, and so then uh, that kind of uh, the delayed the load didn't really make sense once they went to a larger pipeline and stuff. Yeah, okay, and NDNS, we talked about that. So we're going on to 2.6, RV32i conditional branch. RV32i can compare two registers and branch on the result if they are equal, which is BEQ, not equal, which is BNE, uh, greater than or equal to, which is BGE, or less than, which is BLT. Uh, the latter two cases are signed comparisons, but RV32i also offers unsigned versions. Uh, there's BGEU and BLTU for branch greater than or equal to unsigned and uh, branch less than unsigned respectively. The two remaining relationships, which would be greater than and less than or equal, can be checked simply by reversing the operands, since x less than y means that y is greater than x and that x is uh, greater than or equal to y implies y is less than or equal to x. Since uh, RISC-V instructions must be a multiple of two bytes long, 
uh, see chapter 7 to learn about the optional 2-byte instructions, the uh, branch addressing mode uh, multiplies the 12-bit immediate by 2, sign extends it, and then adds it to the program counter. Uh, the PC relative addressing helps with position independent code and thereby reduces the work of the linker and loader. And it uh, says see chapter 3. So let me just go through that one more time. Uh, the risk five instructions must be a multiple of two bytes long. And they say, you know, kind of ignoring the optional two byte instructions. Uh, the branch addressing mode multiplies the 12 bit immediate by two. So it, it uh, you know, it shifts the 12 bit immediate left by one, or you could say it, you know, it, it doubles it. And then it uh, it sign extends it as well, and uh, then it adds it to the program counter. So I guess I don't understand why they do it that way. Why they? Uh, multiply the 12 bit immediate by 2. I guess, oh, because they're saying because of the fact that a RISC V instruction must be a multiple of two bytes long. So uh, the idea there is that, you know, Assuming the instructions are aligned to uh, a two byte boundary, then you're only ever going to want to branch to a location that's a multiple of, of two away. So then it, you can use an offset that's, uh, you know, like multiplied by two. Um, to hit any multiple of two away, if that makes sense. I think that's kind of what they're, they're doing there. Uh, let's see. Oh, and then there's also a, um, a thing in the margins here uh, defining BLTU, I guess. It says BLTU allows signed array bounds to be checked with a single instruction since any negative index will compare greater than any non-negative bound. And uh, I believe that's what they were talking about in uh, a previous chapter. Maybe that was computer organization and design that that was mentioned. I remember uh, seeing that before. I don't remember from which book, but... Uh, I remember it being talked about that that's kind of a, a neat little trick that you can do to kind of save on uh, some instructions. It's uh, when you have, uh, you know, when you're doing bounds checking of an array, uh, basically uh, you can use a uh, sign numbers for your bounds, but you can use the unsigned instruction. And uh, because of how two's complement works, it works out that, you know, if it's negative in uh, two's complement, it would end up being uh, a really large number uh, unsigned. So, uh, you know, that'll, if you're checking if it's greater than or equal to, you know, it'll be larger than the uh, bounds you're, you're comparing against. So the single instruction is able to to handle that. All right. Uh, so what's different? As noted above, RISC-V excluded the infamous delayed branch of MIPS32, Oracle Spark, and others. 
It also avoided the condition codes of ARM32 and x86-32 for conditional branches. They add extra state that is implicitly set by most instructions, which needlessly complicate the dependence calculation for out-of-order execution. Finally, it omitted the loop instructions of the x86-32. Loop, loop E, loop Z, loop NE, and loop NZ. So uh, that's loop E, that would presumably be if it's equal, Z for if it's zero, uh, NE if it's not equal, and Z if it's not zero. All right, and then we have an elaboration here. It says multi-word addition without condition codes uh, is done as follows in RV32i by using SLTU to calculate the carry out. Okay, so this is multi-word addition uh, without condition codes. Uh, this is the, the thing that's kind of interesting. Uh, with... Um, With um, other processors, you have like um, a flag that tells you if you've overflowed uh, when you do an addition, which is equivalent to the carry out. And so um, like the final carry out of the addition, right? Because if you overflowed, you know, that's setting the carry, you know, and if it didn't overflow, then the carryout is zero, so the flag would be off, right? Um, and so if you want to do multi-word addition or other operations like that, uh, it's pretty simple to, to extend those operations to multiple words because what you can do, right, is you can say, you know, add two numbers like add the low the the low halves of the numbers and then uh based on the the uh carry um like you can you can do the next add um i guess you just add one to the result of the next add if the carry is set or something like uh um let me reference the code book uh, if i have this around here maybe not i don't know where i have it right now Okay, I found it. So this is code by uh, Charles Petzold, and he shows an example of this in this book of doing the um, multi-byte addition using uh, condition codes. So let me see if I can find that in the index. Um, maybe not, but it says assembly language starts at 236.
Let me see. Because I, I know he covered it in this book. Let me just take a moment to flip through this book because I'd really like to find his example. Okay, yeah, here we go. Um, so I'm going to read you an excerpt out of this book, uh, out of code. And eventually we're going to read this on the series as well, the book club. But uh, I just want to read a little excerpt from this because it's relevant to what we're talking about here. Um, Okay, so I'm going to start reading here. Uh, this is from chapter 19 of 200 uh, uh, of Code by Charles Petzold, page 268. Uh, this chapter is Two Classic Microprocessors. And he says, a collection of 32 opcodes do the four basic arithmetical operations we're familiar with from the processor we developed in, chap in chapter 17. Uh, these are addition, which is the add instruction, addition with carry, ADC, uh, and that's what we're going to be uh, focusing on here, uh, how you can do multi-byte um, addition using this add with carry thing. Uh, and then they say there's subtraction, and subtraction with borrow, SBB, which is equivalent to the ADC or addition with carry instruction. In all cases, the accumulator is one of the two operands and is also the destination for the results. We don't care about those details, but uh, they say, uh, suppose A, so it's like the instruction is like add A comma B, right? And they say, suppose A contains the byte uh, 35H, which is 35 in hex, and register B contains the byte 22 in hex. After executing sub A comma B, the accumulator contains the byte 13 in hex. Uh, if A contains the byte 35 in hex, and register H contains the byte 10 in hex, and L contains the byte 7C in hex, and the memory location 107C in hex contains the byte 4A in hex. The instruction add A and then dereference uh, uh, HL. So, you know, their notation is like this, right? And that's just uh, like we've seen with RISC-V. You know, it's, you know, just uh, saying, you know, I don't want the value of HL. I want what HL is, you know, pointing to in memory, right? It's like dereferencing in, in C. Uh, uh, 
And so uh, basically the way this works is like, you know, this is like a, a register. Uh, you know, it's it's like a, I guess we're talking about like an 8-bit processor, which is why H is like an, a, a byte and L is like a byte. But then uh, you can address, uh, like it addresses 16-bit addresses. So you can, for addressing, it allows you to combine HL into like a 16-bit a register. So presumably HL is actually a, a 16-bit register under the hood, but you can refer to the H or the L parts of the register as, you know, like 8-bit entities. Because like the ALU, for example, is operating on 8 bits at a time. It, it doesn't work on 16-bit registers, right? Because it's an 8-bit uh, processor. Uh, so that's the, you know, that's the idea here. We have a 16-bit address in HL. We, you know, dereference it. We, you know, get the memory from the location uh, that this is uh, pointing to and we're adding it to to a so we're getting a byte out of memory but it's you know uh, a 16 bit address space rather than an 8 bit address space because <laughs> an 8 bit address space would be pretty limiting you know you, you kind of want more than <laughs> more than you know 256 uh look you know bytes of of memory to work with right so um uh, that's the idea there and uh, like I say, uh, uh, the memory location is 107C, uh, which is, you know, like I say, the 16-bit the memory location. But uh, to get to build that address, they put 10 hex in H, which represents the 10 in 107C, right? And then they put the 7C in L, right? So combined, it's 107C. Uh, and then uh, they're saying uh, it goes to um, or uh, like the once you you dereference this once you get the the value for memory it gives you back the byte 4a in hex that's just the byte that happens to be in that memory location in this example uh, so then when you add those it says it adds the byte in the accumulator which is uh, 35 and they said in this example that a uh, contains 35 in hex and uh, so we're adding the 35 in hex to the byte that we addressed with the pair hl and that byte is 4a in hex and so then it stores the result which is 7f in hex back into the accumulator that's the way this processor is working okay, that we're talking about from the booking code. And I know I'm jumping right into the middle of a, you know, uh, you know, a, a much longer discussion about, uh, you know, specific processors here that this book is going through. But uh, the reason I want to cover this, and I just needed to give you that initial background of, you know, what we're kind of working with here, right? Uh, now that we know what we're working with, we're going to talk about the ADC instruction that it has. Uh, because this is what I'm talking about, about uh, what we're going to see in the RISC-V reader is how you do uh, multi-byte addition uh, without these, um, without the equivalent of an add with carry instruction, right? Uh, the add with carry is like, it's, you know, it's propagating the carry bit. Uh, and that's equivalent to an architecture where uh, you might not have something like an add with carry instruction, but you have overflow detection that you can check with a flag, you know, like the processor has some state that remembers that, you know, you had an overflow, there's a, you know, the carry bit is preserved in that way. And so you could do something similar to what you could do with an add with carry instruction in that case. Um, but uh, I just want to show you this example of this is how it can be done if you have something like that, right? Because when we look at the RISC-V reader, what we're going to see is that it's a little bit more complicated and a little bit less efficient uh, to do it without that. But, um, you know, the benefit is that then you don't 
uh, need your hardware to have that additional complexity. You don't need to have an additional instruction. You don't need to have additional state kept around in your processor. You know, you don't need to uh, take on that extra burden of supporting those things, right? So presumably that they, you know, determined when developing the architecture that it was, a, you know, an overall win to simplify the architecture and not have this kind of thing that I'm going to be showing you right now. Uh, but, you know, as a result, something like what we're going to see here gets a little bit more complicated. So let's look at the simple one first, which is what the, the code book is showing, what, uh, you know, a different architecture might do if you had something like an ADC instruction. So it says the ADC and SBB instructions allow the 8080. Okay, so we're talking about the 8080 processor here. It says uh, it allows the 8080 to add and subtract 16-bit, 24-bit, 32-bit, and larger numbers. For example, suppose the register pairs BC and DE both contain 16-bit numbers. You want to add them and put the result in BC. So basically, you want to say add... Uh, B, C, D, E, right? And in this processor, uh, you know, it takes two arguments and the result goes in the first one, right? Unlike the uh, risk five, where you take three arguments where the first one says where it goes and then the second two are what you're adding, right? This one, uh, you need to start back into one of the registers you're, you're adding to, right? So that's the way this is working, but we can't we can't do something like this, right? Because this is an 8-bit processor, right? There isn't a 16-bit add, right? This is 16 bits. This is 16 bits, right? These are two registers and these are two registers, right? This is actually four different registers and we want to do a 16-bit add using them, right? So, you know, two, an 8-bit register here, an 8-bit register here, so that's going to be used to represent a 16-bit number. Same thing here. We want to add them together. How do you do it if you can only do an add with, you know, a single one of these registers at a time, right? We can't add BC and DE in one go because it's only an 8-bit processor, right? So what do we do? It says, here's how to do it. So you can uh, do you move a comma C? Okay, and that's the other thing with these add instructions is that you can't even say you want an arbitrary register for the first register. The first register has to be the A register. So it's not like Risk Five, where all the registers are like general purpose registers and you can use them anywhere you want. In the 8080, it's actually uh, the registers are kind of more special purpose. So the A register is the accumulator register and it's wired up directly to the ALU. So when you want to do something like an addition, that ALU circuit is hardwired to take A, the A register, as the first argument for the addition and to write the result back into A, right? Uh, it can't take an arbitrary register as the first input and it can't write the output to an arbitrary register. Those both have to be A because it's literally hardwired to do that. So. You know, <laughs> we need to, so if we're going to add these numbers together, the first thing we want to do, right, is we want to add the low half of the number. So we want to add, we want to do add C E, right, because this is the addition of the low half of the number, but we're going to want to, you know, propagate the carry. So keep that in mind, right? But basically what we want to do is this, but 
you know, and there's a problem here, which is uh, this has to be A, right? Uh, it, you can't put C here. It has to be A. So first we move C into A uh, to get around that limitation, right? And then we're going to do the addition. So we're going to say add A E. And now I take it that the um, the processor keeps the overflow uh, of add like this does what I said before about how it sets uh, a flag like the processor has state that it keeps around and so it detects that this might cause an overflow and if it does it sets a flag that says hey you overflowed and so then the add with carry instruction literally all it does is it does the same thing as an add but if it sees that uh, the overflow flag got set uh, from a previous instruction then it uh, it um, uh, adds an extra one in basically the same thing as when you do a sub <laughs> if you were doing on if you were doing signed um, working with sign numbers uh, to do a sub right you just set the control line which sets the carry in right but we're not going to flip the uh, when you do a, a subtraction, you also flip the the second register, right? You flip all the bits in the second register to do two's complement, because uh, the flipping all the bits does one's complement, and then setting the carry in to one adds one, and flipping the bits and adding one is two's complement. So what the add with carry does is it's a similar thing to the sub instruction. It's just that it doesn't do anything with the second register. It just has a control line that uh, sends the uh, the carry flag, the overflow flag that got set, some, which is stored somewhere in the processor, like it has some register that holds that state. It checks the bit from that register, and then it, it sends the result of that bit. Like if the bit is one, it sends a you know a signal down the 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 wire. And if it's zero, then you know it. It's you know the line is low, uh, and uh, so that gets sent as the carry in to the adder. So uh, it adds one if there was a previous addition that overflowed. Basically, uh, that's how add with carry works, right? It's a pretty simple concept, and so that is what's going to allow us to add the high halves together. Because what happens is we need to add the high halves, but we also need to take in the carry from the previous addition. We need to take in the carry from this operation. Well, this processor just so happens to store that somewhere and has an instruction to do exactly that, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, you know, move a, or I guess we need to first of all uh, we need to store our result first of all so our result is an A right that's the result of C plus E that needs to go back in C right so we're gonna have to do something like this and then we're gonna have to move uh b into a right and then we do add with carry and then uh, we're adding d and then finally we can move the results to um to b right and that should be the sequence to add BC and DE and get it back in BC. So let me check the book to make sure I, you know, did that right. Uh, this book. <laughs> okay, so it says first you move uh, C into A, which is the low order byte. Then you add E to A. Then you move A to C and then you move uh, B to A, 
and then you add with carry D to A, and then you move A to B. And I'm reading all those instruction, second operand, two, third operand, <laughs> or, you know, first operand, I mean. You know, that's how I'm reading it. Like, I, I read the instruction, and then I read right to left, right? Uh, so, yeah, we got that correct. That's the sequence to do um, in addition when you have that state around, right? It's pretty simple conceptually because, you know, you've got this add with carry thing, right? So it makes it very simple. Like, the moving stuff, you don't need to carry a, care about this, right? Like, this this, 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 we don't care about any of that. That's just busy work, right? That's just, you know, the fact that the the add, uh, you know, that we don't really have a general purpose register system, you know, it, the, the, add ta the adder takes an accumulator register, which is hardwired and stuff like that. That's what's causing us to need to do this busy work, right? That, that stuff we don't care about. What we do care about is this sequence basically that you can do an add and then you can do an add with carry right it's really conceptually simple it's as simple as those two instructions basically that you add and then you add with carry right so like if you imagined an architecture uh more like risk five you know you could say something like add uh and let's do it more like risk five where we're going to say we have you know we're going to do registers b c d and e again right and we want to add b c d e you could do add you know c c e so now we're saying the risk five style where we specify the inputs and outputs right so c and e are the inputs and uh c here this is the output right so we're adding C and E and storing it to C, right? And we're saying we have an architecture, we're just imagining we have an architecture that can do this, right? Uh, and then what you could do is you could just say, you know, add with carry B, B, D, right? So if you had an architecture like that, you literally don't need any of the moves. You can just directly do these two instructions, right? So that's the heart of the, the concept, right? It's really just those two instructions. If you want to add an arbitrarily large integer, uh, you know, all you need to do is have this add with carry instruction, and then you can just chain, you know, doing an add and then an add with carry, add with carry, add with carry for however big you want to go. Right, and it's as simple as that. Uh, you know, it's super simple. Like the, it's baked into the architecture that you can add. You know, an arbitrarily arbitrarily large numbers, basically. Not truly arbitrarily large, because you know, it depends how many registers you have. Uh, although you could also shuffle things to memory. You know, if you if you want to go really large, but that's going to be a lot slower and, you know, so on and so forth. But, uh, <laughs> you know, that's the kind of idea here. And it's uh, you see, it's pretty simple, right? It's literally just two instructions. Uh, and so it says the two addition instructions are add for the low order byte and ADC for the high order byte. Any carry bit that results from the first addition is included in the second addition. But because you can add only with the accumulator, this little snippet of code requires no fewer than four uh, MOV instructions, which is, you know, the move instruction. Lots of move instructions usually show up in 8080 code. Uh, so it says also, I'll continue reading this because it's still relevant. It says, this is a good time to talk about the 8080 flags. In our processor, in chapter 17, we had a carry flag and a zero flag. The 8080 has three more called sign parity and auxiliary carry. All the flags are stored in yet another 8-bit register called the program status word. Instructions such as LDA, STA, or move don't affect the flags at all. The add, sub, ADC, and SBB instructions do affect the flags, however, in the following way. 
The sign flag is set to 1 if the most significant bit of the result is 1, meaning that the result is negative. The zero flag is set to 1 if the result is 0. The parity flag is set to 1 if the result has even parity, which means that the number of 1 bits in the result is even. The parity flag is 0 if the result has odd parity. Parity is sometimes used as a crude form of error checking. This flag isn't often used in 8080 programming. The carry flag is set to 1 if an add or ADC operation results in a carry, or if a sub or SBB does not result in a carry. This is different from the implementation of the carry flag in the Chapter 17 computer, and again, we didn't look at the Chapter 17 computer. We'll see that when we actually read through this, this book uh, at some point. The auxiliary carry flag is one if the operation results in a carry from the low nibble into the high nibble. This flag is used only for the DAA, decimal adjust accumulator, instruction. So it says two instructions affect the carry flag directly. There is a set with carry or set the carry flag, uh, STC. It's set carry flag to one. And there is complement carry flag, which is CMC. Uh, and it gives the opcodes for those as well. But, you know, we don't really need to, to go over that. But that gives you the basic idea of, of how this stuff works. And I'm going to stop reading from this book there. That's all I really wanted to cover from that is that, you know, basically what you have is uh, a, uh, a status register. I already forget what they called it. <laughs> I think it was like PMW or something like that. Uh, but, uh, you know, they have some register. And in that, in the 8080, of course, it's a, it's a eight bit register. That's a, you know, just a, a status register that holds flags for when you do operations. So when you do, when you do something like an add or an add with carry that affects the flags in the status register, right? And so when you overflow, for example, it sets the carry bit to one. And if you don't overflow, it sets it to zero. And so then an add with carry instruction, you can see that what it's doing is that it's just passing the carry inline to the adder. It's just passing the value from the carry bit in the, the, the status register into, you know, into the carry in of the, of the adder, like I say, uh, and you know, that's all there is to it, right? The add is just adding without setting the carry in of the adder, add with carry. It, and you know it also affects the status flags and then the add with carry is just adding setting the the carry in based on the status uh, of the carry flag and then also you know affecting the the status register uh, based on the result as well and both of those do that so there's a little bit extra com complexity there you can see in these instructions because it's not like a simple um, a simpler architecture where uh, you don't have a status register because when you do an add you don't just do an add right you also need to like look at the most significant bit of the result and set the sign status flag and you need to look at the result of the carry out and put that in the status of the uh, you know, the carry flag in the status register and other such things, you know, you need to look at all these different things, all these different conditions and set the status register accordingly. Right. And a, a bunch of instructions need to do this. Right. And so you can see why a risk five architecture, why the risk five architecture is simpler in that it doesn't have a status register like this. Uh, so uh, for doing like the addition, for example, you know, it, it's a simpler architecture. We don't have an ADC instruction. We don't have a status register. You know, we don't have any of that kind of complexity. But the downside is that we can't add like this, right? We don't have a way to do this sort of thing uh, where you can just chain together adds and add with carries, right? Because this looks really simple. This is really attractive, right? It's just you start off with an add, and after that, for however big you want to go, you just do add with carry, right? So now we need to get a little bit more complicated than that. 
we need to actually uh, figure out how to do it without a status register, uh, without an add with carry instruction, you know, how do we do it? So, uh, where were we? Okay, yeah, elaboration, multi-word addition without condition codes is done as follows in RV32i by using SLTU to calculate the carry out. So what they do is they say, uh, let me just put it like up here, I guess. Well, let me see. How high can we go? Okay, yeah, that's a good place to put it. So we have add a zero, a two, a four. And it says this adds the lower 32 bits, a0 equals a2 plus a4. So a2 and a4 are equivalent to the, um, the C and the E in our previous example, right? Where you see the C and the E are the low, uh, the low bytes of the 16-bit the words that we're adding. Here we have these, you know, we're adding 64-bit numbers using a 32-bit processor. So we have two 32-bit registers, which represent the low, the low halves, right? C and E were the low halves of these numbers. A2 and A4 are the low halves of these numbers. Interestingly, they're putting it in a separate register, A0. They're not storing back to A2 or anything like that. They're putting it in A0. I assume A1 is going to be the high the out, the high half of the output, but I'm just guessing here. Uh, and I guess maybe like a three and a five are going to be the high halves of the um, the rest of these uh, inputs, but I don't know yet. We'll see what they do. So uh, what we've done, let me write on the side here. What we've done, uh, this is what uh, they have in the comment after the, the code, they say this is a0 equals a2 plus a4. Now we're going to do an SLTU set less than unsigned and then we're going to do a2, a0, a2. So let's think about what that's doing. It says uh, a2 prime equals one if a2 plus a4 is less than a2. a2 prime equals zero otherwise. And here the uh, the prime is just meaning uh, you know the new the new value of a2. You know. So they say you know a2 prime equals and they wrote it one if you know and so on and so forth I'm just gonna write it using a ternary right uh, so a2 plus a4 and you know if you if you aren't super familiar with C and you're watching this. Uh, I'll try to explain what's happening here. Uh, but basically this just says if uh, A2 plus A4, oh and sorry this is supposed to be less than A2, right? If A2 plus A4 is less than A2 then um, then we want the output to be 1 and if uh, it's not, if a2 plus a4 is not less than a2 then we want the output to be 0, right? And that calculates the carry because uh, if a2 plus a4 
you know that uh you know that should always be a2 plus a4 we're adding two numbers together right that should always be greater than a2 because a2 plus something right if you're adding something to a2 it should be greater than a2 but if you overflow right then it's not going to be right then it's going to wrap around and it's going to be smaller and so because a2 plus a4 is less than a2 we know that we had an overflow right so we need to set the carry so a2 uh a2 prime is being uh, you know turned into our carry right a2 prime becomes either one or zero based on this calculation that's telling us you know what the carry is so that's how we're calculating our carry uh, I don't know why we're putting it back into A2, but uh, whatever. So next we're going to add A5 and A3. So uh, that's going to be the upper 32 bits. So our number is uh, A3, A2 plus A... 5a4 right this is what we're adding oh and that is my 10 minute warning so Uh, there's just a few more things to go through, so I'm going to try to finish this fast. Uh, the next instruction that we're going to do is add A5, A3, A5, and then we're going to add A1, A2, A5. Okay, so this is saying you know, we're adding A3 plus A5. A5 equals A3 plus A5. And then we're saying A1 equals A2 plus A5, right? And A2 is, is now the carry, right? So A0, A0 is A2 plus A4. So that's, that's the, the low so our result is going to be a1 a0 right this is the the calculation we've just done right so a1 is uh the high the high 32 bits and we're saying a1 equals a2 plus a5 because a2 we set to be the carry by the sltu instruction right this calculated the carry and then uh we're adding that to a5 which is you see the uh the the result of the the high um like it's the result of a3 plus a5 uh this right here so that's the high um the high half of the result without the carry added in so we need to add in the carry as a separate step whereas in the previous architecture we just had to add and add with carry right add with carry does that for us uh, in a single instruction but uh, we don't have that luxury in risk 5 to be able to do it in a single instruction so we actually need to do it in two different ads right instead of being able to do it in a single edition we have to do it in two editions uh, as well as calculating the carry uh, because uh, we don't store that extra state. So uh, what's two instructions in the 8080? Uh, well, you know, minus the fact that the register widths are different. <laughs> you know, what's what's two instructions in the 8080 is equivalent to like four instructions in RISC V. Uh, and so you see uh, the ability to do like something like this is more complicated in RISC V, but uh, you know, it's a trade-off in that the architecture itself is simpler. The hardware is simpler, 
but the software becomes more complicated. It becomes uh, less efficient to do this in, in software. But uh, apparently they felt it was a worthwhile trade-off. Uh, anyway, uh, like I'd say, I you know ran, uh, I hit my, uh, my 10 minute warning, so I needed to wrap this up quick. Sorry, I had to rush to the end here, but uh, we'll uh, look at it more. Uh, I'll, I'll, you know, review this more in the in the next episode. So uh, thank you for anyone who tuned in today. And thank you to everyone who watches on the YouTube archive, which is available at risky.tv. And you can uh, follow me at HMN under, excuse me, HMN underscore on uh, Twitter to get updates about the series. And uh, thank you also to everyone who supports me on Patreon. I don't have any new shout outs to give today, uh, but uh, the support is greatly appreciated. If you would like to follow me on Patreon, you can do so at patreon.risky.tv. Uh, thanks for tuning in also, Krish, and uh, I will see you guys in the next episode. Stay risky, everyone.